to me, uh, the sound is a very important part of the picture. It's not just a, uh, an assembly line thing where you sort of cut the picture and then you just dump the sound on later. It's a much more uh, thought out than that. The sound effects in Star Wars are really what gives these fantastic visuals credibility. And we just take for granted that these machines, these weapons, these aliens, Enjoy your stay. these places are all real. But there always had to be someone selecting or creating the sounds that uh, would be put into the soundtrack. And um, there's a real legacy there. The recordings live on. You know, we have over 5,000 sounds in the Star Wars library, and uh, I've been recording things since about 1975. And I've kind of kept a mental record of the things we've recorded, kind of a living database, I guess. Quite often, I go back to the original tapes to find new material that um, we've never sampled before. Uh, but the, the stock is breaking down chemically. But we have found they can be resurrected if we place them in an oven, which warms the tapes up and will restore it so we can actually play it on one of our ancient quarter-inch tape machines. You have to learn to bake them correctly. If they're left in too long, you end up with this interesting piece of art. It used to be sound. <laughs> I don't know. You can uh, use these recordings as a uh, inspiration sometimes for new things. I've been working with Ben Bird, our sound designer, in episode two for the last couple of years. And uh, he's the godfather of the Star Wars sound universe. Make sure six is done in the first part of April. Most people don't realize all the different sound elements that make up a final soundtrack of a film. It's pretty rough right now. Like the Foley and the sound effects and the ADR and the production dialogue. And that process will take about a year before we get to the mix. We're always on the alert for new sounds. And it's a 1942 gas air raid alert sign. It's, it's disgusting. We collected a bunch of mechanical sirens, and that one was a real star. We took it and recorded it down in the parking garage so it really would echo. Now, we used this for the speeder's dive in the speeder chase. I love mechanical sounds, you know, things that are especially old devices, things that aren't, you just can't find them anywhere. One of the sounds we gathered was uh, the Vickers Vimy biplane, which Matt went out and recorded. The sound of that airplane uh, ended up being used for the sound of the gunships that are in the Clone War at the end of the film. Some of the sound of that uh, biplane was I pitched it up and made it higher pitched sound out of it for the Geonosian fighters. I'm the supervising sound editor. I provide him raw sound effects elements. The main thing when you're out recording is you're just going to look for something unique, something you hear, you haven't heard it before, and you grab it, and you can use it for, you know, anything. The droid factory sequence required practically every bit of machinery we've ever recorded. machines that we recorded back as far as Empire Strikes Back, some metal stamping machines that were used. I found in the past that we've used almost every sound we've recorded by the end of the film. All of those bits and pieces were brought into the sound design room and reworked to create new sounds out of them. I always wanted to blend the literal with the non-literal. Always, we've made machine sounds, stamping, cutting, banging, the th things you might expect with these machines. But this is a foreign alien world. What's to say it would sound like the Ford Motor Company? It should have some other otherworldly quality to it. I'm constructing this mentally as I go, so it's sort of a intensive. It's composition. 
the idea of using percussion, musical sounds, intermixed with the actual organic sounds of the machinery. So it'll be a little bit of a surprise, have some kind of dramatic freshness to it, and to be just what the audience may expect going in. So we're just going to try it, and we'll, we can keep it separate, we can throw it away, we can use it. We'll, we, I just want to have follow through on this idea. Anakin! How many times have I told you? Oh, oh, Stay oh, away oh, from oh, power oh, couplings! Oh, oh, oh. There's dialogue replacement because the set often can be very noisy. You're crazy. Slow down. If uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan are riding in the speeder, well, there's wind machines blowing on them. The track is just unusable. Um, it's recorded, and then it uses a guide for the actors to come in and repeat their performances to get a clean and intelligible version of, of the dialogue. Has they all left to come to the ADR session yet? You call it Nabu, don't you? Nabu. 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 Yeah, we just do a wild take of struggles and I can cut mm -hmm. that in. I, it's not it. like she has dialogue, remember? That's true. It's not dialogue, it's just struggling. It's just struggling. Okay. Here we go. Pair of lungs there. Yeah. No. No. Beautiful. That was good. <laughs> Let's do one more for safety and. Uh, yep. Well, that was good. What's in a movie we do? Exactly. <laughs> An action picture. <laughs> Here we go for take two. <laughs> That was good. That was great. Yeah, I think we got that covered. I'm doing I Hit the Ship as well, aren't I? Yeah. Yes, it's all part of the same thing. Here we go. Take one. I hit the ship, but they used a decoy. Shit, I got the sink on that one. That was great sink. That was great, that too. Was great. Right. Was he happy? That, that was really happy. Good. I'm very happy for that one. That just, just, I want one more for safety, and where I think we what? got it. Whoa. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need one more. OK. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to look out for the Something. You used to care. I still care. I hit the ship, but they used a decoy. See, that's now I got so much more to work with. Okay, that was great. You I think I'm, I'm fine here. You made my night. <laughs> okay. Do you have the digital characters too, which you have to start from scratch? Take three, buddy. The Padawan is right, and only those who have turned to the dark side can sense the possibilities of the future. On this film, we're going to record something like close to 900 lines of the dialogue. Mm. Meditate on that. I will. Or I must. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well get three in a row, right? <laughs> beautiful. I think that's beautiful. I don't, that was take two or take one? That, that was take six. two. Yeah. Well, take two is the one. So I think we've done it. Yeah. I think we can go home now. Yeah. May I present Lama Su, Prime Minister of Kamino. And this is Master Jedi, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Koya? Hi. Yes? Um, I'm just about done with spotting Lama Su here, so we're going to need to take this. This is the composite reel you gave me from the picture department. I don't have time to send anything FedEx. If you could put it up on our um, internet server for Sound Firm over in Sydney, so they'll have the same media we have and then I'll just make sure that the tie line's working, which is going halfway around the world. Okay. How far away are they? 15,000 miles? Yeah, something <laughs> like that. So the actor's in Sydney, and George and I are gonna be in his theater in the main house. Long distance looping. Yeah. <laughs> the audio is going via ISDN. It's being encoded on both ends to sound CD quality. And then the video is actually, I've got duplicate video on both sides, and I'm just sending control information to both. Uh, so I'm not actually sending video. Fett demanded only one thing, an unaltered clone for himself. Curious, isn't it? I have to hear it again. Yeah, I think you had it, just you were just one beat <clears throat> too early. Fett demanded only one thing, an unaltered clone for himself. Curious, isn't it? 
Nice. That was really good for the whole thing. This is the best we've ever had it in terms of the setup and the quality and the yeah. ability to actually do it. And yeah. This works amazingly well considering that they're in Australia and we're here. We tend to work with a smaller crew over a longer period of time compared to other feature films. We actually have a very small sound editing crew. We really did this film with two principal sound effects editors. We have those elements of the metal, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to add some dirt in. And then we still have these unrolling effects, too, which are when the... Bruce has been doing all the Geonosian crowds and all the crashes and impacts and, you know, that sort of thing. Terry's working on the lasers. I'm doing the creatures. Um, some poor person is going to have to do all the lightsabers. Right. <laughs> Who is that person? Uh Hiya, Terry. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> so what do we have today? Do I hear the arena? A little bit of it, sure. See how dense it is. <laughs> no, that's not enough lasers. Wow. See, see they'll probably be shooting in those marching shots. You know, uh -huh. yeah. I, I just don't know. But that's great. Um, There'll be I more lasers in this than ever before in any Star Wars movie. Density. I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So I'm off to my next round. See Keep you. up the good work. Foley are the sound effects that are really too specific to be found in a library. I got the, uh, the dippity doo and the chamois. You know, I'm going to bring this over. We'll spot the scenes uh, with the Foley department and they will go through like an old radio play and perform them like with props. And uh, the Foley editors will then put that in exact sync with the picture and we'll mix it down as part of the effects track. There was some really excellent Foley sounds done by Denny Thorpe and Jana Vance for the Cahoons okay, crawling across the floor. Give it a go. Thank you. If it's asteroids exploding and, you know, rocket ships flying by, that wouldn't be us. We carry the reels that have a lot of people that are moving and walking and doing stuff. It just gives an added level of realism to the scene, especially if you're dealing with digital characters that have no sound whatsoever. Yeah, that's really good. That's awesome. Nice job recording too, Pat. Yeah. That one was not so good. Maybe let's make them like little, a little like a parting, because there you can see that they're still together, and uh -huh. then they're going to come back together, and then we'll get a, okay. another one. But we got to make it sound, you know, passionate. Okay, we're all set. Let's let her rip. I can't rip anymore. It's not film. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. <laughs> ben, you're sweating. <laughs> Is that an elbow kiss or a forearm kiss or? You, know, you, know, you have to kind of know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. with your... <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know. It was great. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next thing. Right now, I'm just trying to create some buzzy, insecty kind of sounds out of actual speech. We start out speaking English, and then we slowly change it word at a time. And then we started talking through the edge of a piece of paper, making a buzzy sound. Look up the bee. Could be there. Could be there. I start cutting it up in little pieces and changing the speed, do it, make it so it's too fast. You know, you could never say it this way live. We talked about the idea that since Poggle apparently has two mandibles, he has an up and down and a side to side, like a like uh -huh. a grasshopper, and that 
if I make this sort of buzzy thing, he would go, he would kind of do that with a funny little animation uh, with part of his well, mouth this is, it's and good, talk. It's important that this be articulate like yeah. this, because I think it is reasonably articulate. I mean, this is the most organic in terms of it's not pitch changed or anything, so there's right. no electronic aspect to it. He said, we have no choice but to order our treat. Uh-huh, okay, he's more emphatic so about it. So he's much more emphatic about yeah. it, but it means you need to, you should really see it. As long as you keep them not going on simultaneously, right? Like if they butt against each mm -hmm. other, a word can form into that. It sounds great. Yeah, it's good. It's the last, uh, the last voice in the whole film right now for me. From here on in, it's just a giant mix. Can't believe we're here finally. My job is to work with the editors to make sure that uh, we get all the elements of the film, like the foley, the sound effects, the uh, replaced dialogue, the production dialogue, and the sound design, and to make sure that they get all of those elements into sync with the most current picture, and then we bring that to the mix. The final mix lasts for about a month on a Star Wars film. We go into a dark room every day, and we listen uh, to every sound and every bit of music and every bit of dialogue, and we inch our way through each scene, sometimes only completing a few minutes a day. He can immediately decide whether he, you know, wants some major changes of some sort, uh, often tearing things apart and putting them back together a different way until we find something that really satisfies us all and will satisfy George Lucas. Gary and Ben are in charge. There's anybody else who has any power over here. Yeah, the first day of the final is always uh, always uh, unknown. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen until you start running it all together. The whole problem is that we haven't heard. Michael's done the dialogue. He hasn't really heard everything that we've done in effects. We haven't heard the music at all. So it all throw it all into the pot right off the bat. And then sometimes sort it out. it's a surprise how it all sounds together. It's kind of like brainwashing in a way. You you go in and you're in the dark. There's loud sounds. There's one source of light on you. <laughs> the pop, boop. Oh, everybody stood up to attention. You hear things over and over and over again. Yeah, be careful with their their little squeaky sounds. Little chirpy chipmunk sounds. Yeah, there's some great foley in here, but I guess you don't have foley, do you? <laughs> there's a little cutie stuff in there. I think it's, it's too close to what R2 does, and it's also. I think that is R2. It's, oh. it's R2 sleeping off screen. He's oh, snoring. Well, and get rid of it. He's paid by the beat, George. Yeah, he, he jabbers. R2 was lost, and I hope he's not too disappointed. But it happens to all of us. We do things that get cut out of the movie, <laughs> you know? I've done a million things that are cut out of the movie, so. It would be nice if we could record a, for you know that guy that almost runs into Obi-Wan, the, not the two guys, but the first guy? Uh-huh. Oh, right. Maybe you should say, what the? It's a traditional line, it's in all the movies, and it'd be a good place for it, I think. Uh, what the? Uh. I love that horn. Oh, the beep beep. <laughs> the Tucker. <laughs> well, now we got real one done. Now what do we do? <laughs> beep up real two, please. All right, well, good luck. <laughs> Take two aspirin, call me in the morning. <laughs> but minor details, they add up to things. They can add up to significant changes if you do enough of them. Coming right up here, it's like, it's like that and that. So what I'm doing now is a welding, which is, I think, going to take a while. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm not rushing. I just no, I'm, I'm just, just I'm just thinking checking ahead. in. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Burt. Cookies. Who's got cookies? Okay. I guess we're on effects. <laughs> You know, it needs to be more like chattering, you know, like, like crying. And that kind of stuff. Not this kind of. Can you borrow that microphone for a second? <laughs> <laughs>
Wait till you hear the droid factory. There's a real collision of a cacophony of craziness. Of movie styles coming together. Now, what do you think about this? <laughs> well, uh, it's a tough one. I just don't think the percussion is strong enough to withstand what's going on in there. Uh, I think yeah, we should just alternate. replace the, the uh, percussion part with effects. In actuality, some of the musical sounds that I had made for the Droid Factory, the drums and things like that were dropped, but I re the re idea was sort of reborn in the monster fight. Rhythmic sounds that acted as a response to events on the floor of the arena. Horns, as if uh, it was a sports, uh, you know, a wild sports crowd blowing horns and chanting kinds of things that we immediately associate with the emotions of a giant crowd in the stadium. It was a good trade, actually, as that's the nature of making these films, that you can always change something, and there's always a, you can revisit a scene and, and evaluate it one more time. It's, a, it's an ongoing process that is really only brought to the end uh, by the calendar. I don't know whether I should bring it up now, but I guess I should. Yeah. I had a rather... Uh... This is just an aside, <laughs> which will probably cause you a lot of angst. But we're almost done, so I can't do this anymore. It's back in Palpatine's office. The little hologram comes on. Right. And he says, good, we'll deal with this later. Send them in. Yeah. That should really be good, send them in. We'll deal with this later. See what you can do. I'm going to cook up some, uh, <laughs> cook up the words. Good. Send them in. We will discuss this matter later. I don't think so. <laughs> what is this sound? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Actually, it's arcing. It's electrical arcing. From 25 years ago. Yeah. Just seems like it's not good enough. There's always a point toward the end during the final mix then I can actually sit down and address the absolute final details and it adds what I would say the final accent to a moment in the film. During the asteroid chase, which is basically a sound effects only sequence, it was hard to come up with a sound for the seismic charge that would have dramatic contrast to every sound that had just preceded it. It didn't occur to me until we were in the final mix struggling with this problem that in, the best solution might be to have no sound. I reasoned that all energy was pulled into it. No sound could escape. And it was only after it had detonated that somehow the energy was released and then the sound occurred. I created what I call an audio black hole. Certainly at this point, it's just going to be some minor details that are changing. It will shape the reels all together as if it was final, and then play it for him again, and he'll, but he'll decide. But that it basically creates a vast amount of havoc at this end if you make changes after the mix. Yes, it's a little complicated. It's inevitable, George. You've done it every time. Yeah, it's it's you know. What would it be without a sync change in seven? We wouldn't feel right. Every filmmaker feels that as long as there's time, there's something they can do to improve the movie. New animation or something? Well, no, we made some changes on the Monica one, and they hadn't gotten into the deluxe one because they were trying to go so fast. Uh -huh. But I said, no, go back and make it right before you make the printing masters. You know, there's a reason why we improve a shot. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's just traditional to work until someone just takes it away from you. You know, films are not released, uh, they escape. It's amazing. I know. It is. It's, it's amazing incredible. to see it. I know, sure. It was the first time. time through the whole movie. Yeah, it's like, and, uh, I this is normally what people get to see at the first rough cut screen. Yeah, I know. I can't <laughs> <not> look at it. <laughs> 
just sort of think of all hours. You know, just that we've oh, lived with this yeah, for two years. Yeah. And, and it's a matter now of meeting or not meeting expectations. That's that whole fact that you yeah. can't that, predict. Hey, we're beyond that now. We've That's finished right. it. It's a movie. Yeah. We've done it. We've done do? it. We did our part. <laughs> <laughs>